McBride, and I'm the senior manager of the T-Mobile Enterprise Data Governance Office. We're so excited and honored to accept the 2020 Calibra Excellence Award. I'm here with my team to talk about our data governance journey and how Calibra has contributed to our success. First, I'll introduce Evangeline. She has been a product crusader for user-centric design and helped us mature our data governance products and services. Next, I'll introduce Scott Kratz. Scott has helped lead our data stewardship program, our metadata collection program, and data lineage and workflows in Calibra. Next, Chris Cowan has continued to play a jack of all trades, sometimes an architect, sometimes a product manager. He helps lead our technical design team and the Calibra management team, and also helps build out our business and technical architecture to support system integrations and system onboarding. Lastly, Vanessa can't be here today, but she's been a huge part of our core team and helped drive adoption of our data strategy across the enterprise. Last but not least, I can't emphasize how important our cross-functional relationships are. Partnering with privacy, security, our data council, data stewards, and our technology system owners has been critical to our success and helped us build the culture of managing data as an asset at T-Mobile. It's really taken all the people so without further ado, I'll turn it over to Evangeline. She's going to help talk about how we've learned more about navigating T-Mobile and bringing data governance to our business. So before we dive deep into data governance, I'd like to take a little drive to Boston. So anyone who's ever driven in Boston knows that it's notoriously challenging. And why is that? Well, there's three main reasons. For starters, Boston streets don't really run on a grid. A few years ago, Jeff Boeing, an urban planning professor who's now at the University of Southern California, actually visualized the consistency of street networks for a variety of cities. As you can see in the visualizations here, most of the streets in Manhattan run basically along a north-south or east-west grid. Boston legend has it that the streets were made by paving over cow pads, and you can see clearly what that looks like here. Second, the streets weren't made for modern cars. So what you have are streets that are narrow and sometimes end abruptly or suddenly change into one-way streets for no apparent reason. Third, tribal knowledge. If you stop and ask a local for directions, they might use a name for a street that's not even on a map. This is a lot like what you have when you don't have data governance. You have a situation where data is hard to find, hard to use, and often consumed out of context. This had been the situation at T-Mobile for too long when we started on our journey. So about three years ago, we set out to solve this problem. We said we have to help people find their data. And we built the data catalog. We set up a database, documented our data structures. We even built a little automation. And then we launched. And that began what we like to call our metadata management and data governance boot camp. Nellie's going to tell you about more what that was like from there. Thank you, Evangeline. So yes, it has been a journey. We started out in 2016, um, launching an enterprise data council that helped us build one of the first integrated data warehouses at T-Mobile and Teradata. And from there, that team helped us build the data standards that helped us manage data quality, retention, security, and all of the things that we think of as the pillars of data governance today. From there, in 2017, we launched the data governance office, as we know it today and started bringing people on board to help us build the data catalog. Data catalog launched almost uh, close to 2018, in the fall of 2018. And um, that was a basic metadata system, as Evangeline said, our metadata bootcamp in the SQL Server. And from there, we launched a stewardship program. We launched a very successful Slack channel called Data 411. And um, we have over a thousand users on that today. We launched great forums like Data and Doritos to bring our data community together and bring everyone together at T-Mobile who cares about data and talk about data. From there, um, in 2019, we realized we quickly had um, an appetite for more capabilities for metadata management, data quality, and other data governance products that we couldn't support internally and started shopping. After getting 2,000 users on Data Catalog, we purchased Calibra and started that implementation with the build out in the summer of last year. And we recently launched our privacy products at the end of 2019 
and then launched Calibra out to the enterprise in February, which you'll hear a little bit more about our enterprise launch coming up soon. Today, we have a number of different products and services that we're continuing to build out, and we have a really rich roadmap that we're excited to continue growing at T-Mobile. So you're gonna hear a little bit more coming next from Scott, who's gonna talk about our adoption and engagement processes, because we have learned you can build the best system in the world, but if you don't tell people about it and train them how to use it, it doesn't matter. Go ahead, Scott. Thanks, Nellie. So in order to drive that engagement, adoption, and retention across a wide range of audiences in T-Mobile, our team implemented a spectrum of formats. Uh, each with its own breadth and of reach and impact. So we fostered communities within the enterprise, each with their own particular focus. Our data council is comprised of leaders who represent groups of users to guide our efforts and facilitate some communication. Uh, it has a reach across the enterprise, but the day-to-day -day impact on our user base is usually fairly limited. Our Calibra champion community are really Calibra evangelists who help scale our communications, engagement, and training efforts. And then we've also got, for example, our data and Doritos uh, forum, which is for data users to ask questions and spotlight their data use cases. It reaches a good number of our target users and it has practical information about how they use the data. We also maintain various communication and support channels with certain expectations and specific content as well. On the high impact side of the spectrum, we have, for example, the Slack channels that Nelly mentioned. Uh, they're really our primary avenues for addressing user questions, both about data and about our Calibra implementation. Uh, also, we have the Calibra work, uh, feedback workflow which enables users to submit feedback directly to the product team through the Calibra UI. Lastly, with the range of functionality and content in our implementation, we take advantage of a variety of media for training. We have online courses, we have job aids that provide more detailed step-by-step -step guides for completing specific activities in Calibra. We also have training videos, short recorded demos that provide specific tips and tricks for Calibra functionality. Uh, we have weekly office hours. We have enterprise-wide demos, usually on a quarterly basis. Uh, and last but not least, we have custom Calibra dashboards for our users that helps us centralize information across a wide variety of audiences. We found that providing the necessary content where and when users need it has made a huge difference in our success. Chris will speak to that. Thank you, Scott. Hello, everyone. I'm here to share with you how Calibra is contributing to our success. As we saw in the journey, Calibra has helped us evolve from riding a bicycle to driving a Ducati. Vroom, vroom. We now have a platform that is robust, flexible, and reliable. In the last year, we have been able to build out integrations across the enterprise to quickly establish a foundation of information and information a centralized location, unlike anything else available to our data users. This helped us to quickly solidify ourselves in the company as a true value added service. In the last year alone, we've been able to automate connections to over 60 systems, onboarding over 8 million assets, such as tables, columns, and views. At the same time, working with many of our business and technical stewards and utilizing over 30 plus workflows, six of which have helped us standardize 341 business terms and have mapped the, and we have mapped those to 28,000 various assets across Calibra. We expect to increase these mappings tenfold in the coming months through automation. We have been able to increase efficiency and accuracy in our API governance. We have built out a custom API asset operating model to onboard Swagger files consisting of thousands of assets and automated mapping of those to 2,400 API and glossary terms. This has resulted in thousands of man hours saved. To increase quality, integrity, and accuracy of business operations, we've defined 25 data quality rules, established an integration with Atacama, and are in process of onboarding data quality metrics at the data, data level now. 
thus helping our users to not only find their data, but to trust their data. To improve compliance and decrease risk, we have accomplished several feats this year. We've mapped 250,000 columns to security classifications, 2,700 columns are now governed by CCPA controls, 34 business processes, and 28 systems are governed by 858 SOX controls. To enable this, we've created integrations with Archer to ingest SOX reports and controls, integration with Wirewheel to support CCPA record of processing activities, and data subject access and delete requests. We've also done an integration with Azure to support technical naming standards and various workflows to support metadata collection across a variety of systems. We are ready and excited to work on our formal data governance policy later this year. To our surprise and delight, we've already reached our 2020 goal of 1,200 users by the end of Q1. I guess we're ready for a new goal now, right? For now, we'll focus on continued engagement with our users, building and innovating new cool shit, and providing the information our data users need to be confident and effective. On the next slide, you'll see how Calibra has really enabled us to make a splash when we launched our Edge project to the enterprise on Valentine's Day. With Calibra, I can confidently say that I've never met a data I didn't love. And that's a wrap. We are excited and ready for the challenges ahead of us. For the rest of 2020, the Calibra team expects to lead the industry in driving privacy compliance with Calibra's privacy module, building the foundation for T-Mobile's Sprint integration, and driving robust data governance roles, responsibilities, and accountability across the enterprise. Again, we thank you for awarding T-Mobile. With the Calibra Excellence Award, we are both humbled and pleased to be acknowledged. Thank you very much from our team. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.